Hey, good morning, Grace. Happy Monday morning to you. It's a beautiful day out. Uh, so thankful this morning to have another son-in-law, to have somebody added to our family. We had the wedding on Friday. Everything went well. And so uh, thank you for you, those of you who helped out and those who prayed for us. Uh, we couldn't be more pleased uh, right now. I just want to pray as we look again at the Sermon on the Mount. We're going to look at the issue of our heart and what needs to be done so that we can have a heart uh, that pleases God. Let's pray now. Father, we thank you so much uh, for your great love in giving us your word. Father, you are so faithful to us and that you have given us all we need for life and godliness. And now as we uh, look into your word this morning, Father, please um, help us to be tender and sensitive uh, to the areas in our life that need to be changed. Lord, I pray that as we look at this very difficult issue of sexual sin, Lord, that we would realize how susceptible that we all are to it and that we need a new heart given to us by Jesus Christ so that we can overcome it, so that we can enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, please help us now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, now as we continue at the Sermon on the Mount, uh, we're going to be looking at Matthew 5, 27 through 30. And this morning, Jesus is going to address the issue of sexual sin. And this is something that's so prevalent in our society because, well, we're all human beings. We're all sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. And we all have... Uh, a sin nature that um, really is drawn towards sexual sin and so Jesus understands uh, that and he wants us to address that uh, and so let's look at that this morning and see what God would have for us so Matthew 5 27 you have heard it that you have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart if your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Well, these are very strong words on the part of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, yes, he loves us. Yes, he died for us. But he's serious about sin. He wants us to be serious about sin. And so as we look again at the Sermon on the Mount, remember where we started back in Matthew 5, chapter 3, that Jesus is trying to point out to us how spiritually bankrupt that we are, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Those who are poor in spirit are those who understand how spiritually destitute they are. That they bring nothing to the table of, 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 of spiritual worth to God. And so as we look at the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus continues to drive that point home. That we are spiritually bankrupt and that we need the new heart, the new birth that only he can give to us. The last time I was with you, uh, we looked at the issue of the righteousness of the Pharisees. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, Jesus says, you know what, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, then you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. right? Jesus understood that the people of that day held the Pharisees up in very high esteem and that they viewed the Pharisees as those men who were most certainly going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus saw the Pharisees for who they were and he didn't want the people to look at the Pharisees uh, as this template for entrance into the kingdom because Jesus understood that that, that what they were seeing was the outside of the Pharisees, not their heart. As we looked at, as Jason has looked at already, um, Jesus begins to deal with the issue of the heart by looking at the issue of, of hatred, right? Jesus says, look, you know, you've heard it said, you know, uh, not, to, not to murder people, but I tell you, if you have hatred in your heart towards somebody, you have, in effect, murdered them. And so Jesus starts this this uh, formula of you've, you've read it or you've heard it said, okay, that this is true. Well, I'm telling you that, that really what was intended is this. And so, so the point of Jesus here is, is he's talking about, he's taking what's an external issue and then he's going inside and looking at our hearts and showing us really what the heart issues. And he's trying to show us that the only remedy is a new heart, okay? And he's looking specifically at the Ten Commandments, right? Because the Ten Commandments were given by God to the nation of Israel to guide them as a nation, but also to show them how desperately sinful that they are and how desperately they need 
a Messiah, how desperately they need someone to give them a new heart. So let's look at this text and see what Jesus would tell us about our heart and what the remedy is uh, for dealing with this issue of sexual sin. So let's look at what's in the law, right? I've already said the Ten Commandments are a part of this discussion. What's in the law? Right there in verse 27 of chapter 5, he says, you have, heard it, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. All right, the word adultery there means uh, marital unfaithfulness. And so right there uh, in the Ten Commandments, God is confining sexual relations within the marital relationship. And so any type of sexual relation outside of the marital relationship, that is considered sin. Okay. Now you could say, oh, well, he's just talking about a, a man who, who's married, who has relations with another woman, and that's the only sin in view. Well, that would be, that would be restraining it or, or confining it in a way that God didn't mean to, mean to confine it. And that's really where Jesus is going this morning uh, in this discussion. So the issue there, Jesus brings up, you've heard it said, do not commit adultery. Okay, that's in the law. But now Jesus turns to our heart. What is in our heart? Okay, in verse 28 he says, but I tell you, that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So Jesus really, really, this is amazing what he does here. Uh, and I'm sure that the, the, as the men were listening to this, they're like, no, this can't be, this can't be. I can remember a conversation I was having with a Muslim friend of mine at work one day. And um, we got on the discussion of the Sermon on the Mount and I was trying to explain to him how, how Jesus was showing how desperately wicked our hearts are. And, and I related this, this verse right here to him. And he said, that can't be. That cannot be. That cannot be what God is saying there. That if we look at a woman with lust in her heart, that we've already committed adultery. It just was frying his wires. And he's not alone. It really, it really messes with our way of thinking concerning uh, sexual sin. So Jesus says here, if you look at a woman lustfully, and lustfully simply means desire. If you look at another woman with another woman besides your wife with desire in your heart for her, then you have committed adultery. Whether or not you've actually engaged in that sexual act or not, you have committed adultery. Now, the fact that Jesus is addressing men uh, lusting at women does not does not exempt women from this, right? I think Jesus would clearly expand this to anyone who has lust uh, in their heart towards a member of the opposite sex if they are not in that marital relationship with that person. And so as we look at this, um, one, I guess, phrase or expression that comes up that men um, use at times if they're married is it's okay to window shop, right? If I don't commit the sin, if I'm just looking at other women, well, then, then it's okay. And Jesus is saying, no, it's not okay to window shop. Because when you do that with your eyes, the next step is, is going to be sin. Now, the question comes up also is, you know, um, every time I'm tempted, does that mean I'm sinning? Right? Is it a sin to be tempted? Well, no, it's not a sin to be tempted by something. Right? Because Jesus is very aware of the fact that we have all types of external um issues, external uh, influences coming at us from the outside that would cause us to, to, to be tempted, right? And, and James chapter 1, I think, is helpful here. Uh, in James chapter 1, James says this, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire is conceived, what? It gives birth to sin and sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death, right? And so there's this, this process uh, that goes on, right? We're tempted from outside, and just because we're tempted, that does not mean we, we sin, right? One commentator says this. He says, the New Testament does not equate temptation with sin. Sin begins at the point of consent, not with the temptation itself, and not first in the overt I'm sorry, let me read that again. Sin begins at the point of consent, not with the temptation itself, and not first in the overt act. Right. So it, he's saying there is this, just because you're tempted doesn't mean you sin, okay? But the sin isn't just when you commit the act, right? There's this 
area in between being tempted and committing the sin where this desire fills our heart and we listen this is important we give ourselves over to the desire right we always uh, men talk about this it's the second look right if you're tempted by a woman uh, you know that's that's from the outside that's something that you know that we couldn't help but if we look back at the woman again that means that, that our eyes have taken in and then we, we it's gone into our heart and then we are giving ourselves over to that desire okay and so Jesus says look if you look at a woman lustfully if you have desire in your heart for that woman or if you look at a man woman if you look at a man lustfully and then that desire in your heart is something that you begin to mull around in your heart then you've committed sin then you've committed adultery uh, then you've committed sexual sin and really I have to bring up now uh, at this point in the discussion the issue of pornography because pornography is so pervasive in our society pornography is a huge huge blight uh, on our culture uh, not just our culture in the United States but all over the world uh, the issue of pornography uh, is uh, is ravaging uh, the hearts of young people the minds of young people not just adults uh, of course I've got to give you some statistics now about pornography 25% um, of all engine searches 25% of all the searches on the internet are related to pornography did you know that every every second there are 28,000 people viewing pornography all right 75 million people each month visit websites visit pornography por pornographic websites and I think that number's probably gone up a little bit 43% um, of all internet users view porno uh, pornographic material online 43% of all internet users view pornographic material online this is an interesting statistic 75% of people uh, who view por pornography online say they do it accidentally all right. and this is really is where it hits home I want to bring this into our houses 47% of families say that pornography is an issue at home with their family whether it be a spouse or a child nine out of ten boys and six out of ten girls before the age of 18 have viewed pornography uh, I'm not going to give you all the statistics here about kids but it's amazing that most kids who view pornography begin early way before the age of 18 they're usually prepubescent and here's a devastating statistic those who are married and regularly view pornography are 300 percent more likely to be divorced so pornography is a huge issue in our culture and it's not something that that the people in Jesus day necessarily had to deal with the influences we have that are drawing our hearts away from God towards sin are incredible and so we have to be aware of that and we have to be willing to fight it we have to be willing to do whatever it takes to keep our hearts from being drawn into sexual sin so what's to be done right Jesus lays down the gauntlet here if your right eye causes you to stumble gouge it out and throw it away that's verse 29 verse 30 and if your right hand causes you to stumble cut it off and throw it away so Jesus he gets drastic here gouge it out cut it off do whatever it takes to keep your heart from lusting after somebody that you're not married to All right now cert certainly Jesus is using hyperbole here uh, he's he's exaggerating to make a point uh, can a blind person without hands commit adultery well certainly they can a blind person without an eye or without a hand can commit sexual sin they can lust in their heart yeah, but so Jesus point isn't do that physically his point is do whatever it takes to to help yourself get past this issue of lust in your heart and so my question for you practically speaking is is what are you putting in front of your eyes each day maybe you may say well pastor Jay, I don't have a problem with porn nobody in our family has a problem with porn at least you think they don't that's not an issue for that. Well, my question for you is, is what are you watching on television? What shows are you streaming? What shows are you binging on that treat marital unfaithfulness as something that is commonplace? What shows are you are you streaming that really uh, objectify people, that turn them into sexual objects, all right, objects of pleasure? 
Okay, what what shows are you watching that are full of of adult humor or innuendo? And you have to understand that whatever we put in front of our eyes begins to feed our appetites. It's so important that we understand that that everything we take into our mind is shaping and influencing our mind, and it and it, it affects our desires. And Jesus says you've got you've got to cut it off. You've got to to gouge it out. And so really we have to as a, as adults as we look at this as we guard our home, ask ourselves, okay, do we have safeguards on our devices for our kids? Do we have safeguards on our devices for ourselves when necessary? Um, what is being watched in my home? I don't think you're being a prude if you guard what your children, even your adult children, are watching on television because you love them. All right, so again, the point ne isn't necessarily, um, at Jesus' point is dealing with sexual sin, but it, that's not really the big idea. The big idea here is, look, your heart is desperately wicked. You need a heart transplant. You, you need drastic measures taken so that you can enter into the kingdom of heaven. Don't hold the Pharisees up as this, as this uh, paradigm for spirituality. Uh, understand that they have wicked hearts and that they need the Messiah. They need Jesus Christ. And so Jesus says, look, there's a lot at stake here. And look at verse 29. He says, it's better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Verse 30, it's better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Now, just an interesting point there. He says the whole body is thrown in, so that really uh, necessitates a, a bodily resurrection for everybody. Uh, the second point there is it says thrown into hell, and that word hell there is Gehenna. Uh, the valley that was there right outside of Jerusalem all right, was a place where pagan sacrifices were offered even by the Israelites, a place where fires were burning, where they would throw trash, uh, and they kind of equated that with what hell was going to be like. So uh, that's not the point. Though. The point is this, what's at stake is your eternal destiny. Does that mean that there's no forgiveness uh, if we commit sexual sin? Well, no, that's, that's not what's going on here. Uh, Jesus is saying, look, if you give yourself over to sin, and sexual sin is very powerful, if you give yourself over to that, okay, then that's an indicator that you don't have a heart transformed by God. You don't have that new heart given to us by the new birth. And so for those of you who are struggling with sexual sin this morning, and I know that it is a pervasive problem in our society, Pornogra porn uh, viewing pornography is, is a huge issue. Um, there is forgiveness, right? There is no sin that is too great that Jesus Christ cannot forgive it. Any sin you commit can be forgiven. The only sin that's not forgiven is rejecting him as Messiah. Any sin, no matter how great, no matter how long you've been entrenched in this sin, any sin can be forgiven by Jesus Christ. And so you need a new heart, though. You need the new birth. It has to begin there. If you're trying to overcome sexual addiction, overcome pornography, and you, you haven't had your heart transformed by God, you're going to fail. Ultimately, you will fail. For those of us who are believers, if you know you're born again and you know that you're struggling with pornography, uh, understand that God cares, God forgives. There are people around you that, that care and will forgive and will love you and help you through this. And that God is faithful, right? 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there's no temptation that's overcome you or overtaking you. That is what is except what is common to mankind, right? We all struggle with temptation, Paul says in First Corinthians. It's it's common to us, but God is faithful, and He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, right? Being tempted is not sin, okay? But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out, a way of escape, so that you can endure it, all right? And a part of that process is being transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the sad part about pornography. It transforms our mind towards the world. God's word transforms our mind towards him, towards Jesus Christ, towards being like Jesus Christ. And that's what we need. We need to have our heart and our mind transformed. So Jesus this morning tells us, look, you know, the issue is the heart. You need a heart transformation, and only Jesus can offer that to you. Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Thank God for the new birth through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for 
addressing this issue that is so pervasive in our society, this issue of sexual sin. I pray that if anybody watches this and they're struggling uh, in this, Lord, I pray that you would give them hope through the new birth. If any of my brothers and sisters in Christ are struggling with sexual sin, Father, help them to see the great danger in it, that they need to take drastic measures, and that you always provide a way of escape. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Grace, have a great Monday. Have a great week. Remember, Jesus is better. Jesus is better. Always choose Jesus over sin. Love you guys. Bye-bye.